video is to introduce the concept of functions and what they are because that's really what um, a lot of people seem to struggle with what they are and um, so a function is a special type of relation so a relation basically is any relationship between two variables so it can be represented as a set of ordered pairs two four let's say five seven eight nine I'll put two relations up um, negative one zero here's one relation here's another two four set of ordered pairs five seven two eight negative three one okay both of them have uh, four points within the relation so these are both relations they're relationships between x and y you know obviously for an x there is paired a y now what's the difference between the two um, if you notice for the first relation, for every x, there exists only one y. And for the second relation, I have a repeated x value with two different y values. So in other words, I have one x value corresponding to two y values, one input corresponding to two different outputs. So therefore, that goes against the definition of a function. Now, a function is a special relation for every x or every, you know, input x is usually our input independent variable for every x there exists only one y okay so that means if i have a relation represented in this way as a set of ordered pairs if i have a repeated x value corresponding to two y values it goes against the definition of a function and therefore it is not a function so i would say this is not a function and this one is a function. There's only one x for every single y. I don't have a repeated x with different y's. Here I have a repeated x with different y's and therefore it goes against the definition of a function. For every x there corresponds or exists only one y. For every input there's only one output. Here I have one input, two different outputs, not a function. Now this is only one re representation of a relation. I can represent a relation also as a graph. Um, so let's say I'm going to graph a couple, uh, a couple relations. Every time you guys graph something, you should label your x and y axis. I'm just going to quickly do uh, two different graphs. So let's do um, a circle and let's do a parabola. Okay. You'll see these graphs if you haven't already. You'll see how to graph these type of uh, situations if you haven't already. But what we want to know is which one is a function? Which one is a function? Is this guy a function or is this guy a function? Are they both? Are none of them functions? If you're trying to determine if a graph represents a function, then you're using what we call the vertical line test. the vertical line test. So what that means, you're going to hold your pen or your marker vertically, right? So let's say that I hold uh, a pen or marker vertically over here. And it has to be at any point over the graph. If that, you know, vertical line touches more than one portion of your graph, then it's not a function. So for example, here, I draw a line at this portion of the graph. It's only touching this graph at this one point. It's not touching it at more than one point. So, so far it acts like a function, but let me continue that line anywhere along this graph, anywhere, anywhere along this graph. If I draw a line, does it only touch one point on that graph? If it does, so this line only touches at one point here. This line only touches at one point here. If it does, then it satisfies the definition of a function for every X that corresponds one Y. It passes what we call the vertical line test and therefore is a function. In this case, if I draw a vertical line anywhere along this graph, notice that that line is touching more than one point. So I draw the line here, it's touching two points. I draw the line here, it's touching two points. Imagine if we had um, ordered pairs corresponding to this point. So let's say this was like 2, 4. This is the same x-coordinate. 
So this would be 2 and let's say negative 4 for y. Notice that I have a repeated x value with two different y values. So again, I have one input with two different outputs, one x corresponding to two different y's. So it's not satisfying the definition of a function. It's not passing the vertical line test because that vertical line is touching the graph at more than one point. Now, if this happens anywhere along the graph, it's not a function. I don't care if it's one part of the graph. Here, obviously, any vertical line that I, you know, that I uh, draw or whatever, you know, hold your marker vertically, whatever works, if it touches twice or more than once, it's not a function. So everywhere along this graph, basically, it touches more than one point, except at, you know, these very ends here and here. That doesn't matter. Because everywhere else it touches the graph more than once, this is not a function. So this is another way to determine if I have a function. This is if I start with a graph and I use the vertical line test to determine that. Um, now, let's just, uh, if I have a function, then I use what's called function notation. This is function notation. So this is not f times x, this is f of x, f of x. So be careful you don't confuse the two. And it takes the place of y. So if I have, you know, something like this, I'll make it very simple, y is equal to 2x. Instead of writing y, if this is a function, I would write f of x is equal to 2x. And this would be my function notation for this equation. So f of x is equal to 2x is the same thing as saying y is equal to 2x. And I can plot points if I want to. For example, if I'm asked to find f of, let's say, 2 or f of negative 2, this is saying for this particular function, for this input, what is the output? Or in other words, when x is negative 2, what is y? What do you have to do? Well, you're placing this x with negative 2, so everywhere in your function, you're, you're going to also replace x with negative 2 and simplify. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 4. Um, one more. I could also write g of x is x squared minus 4x plus 1. This is also a function. It represents a different function than this. So I'm going to use a different variable. Instead of f of x, I use g of x. And I want to find g of negative 1. What does that say? I'm replacing x with negative 1 in the function g. So everywhere I see an x, notice that everything else is staying the same. I'm still squaring that value. I'm still subtracting. I still have a 4 here, whatever that is, plus a 1. It's just in place of x, I am putting negative 1. So I always tell my students, put parentheses where x is, and then just everything else copy down, and then replace that x with whatever value is here, and simplify. One of operations, I do exponents first. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 4 times negative 1, positive 4, plus 1. g of negative 1 is equal to 4, 5, 6, 6. Notice also that I said that when x is negative 1, my output is 6. It's also saying that this point exists on the graph of g of x. So I can also determine an ordered pair that exists on the graph by inputting a value for x and getting an output for um, the function, in this case g of x. Um, one more example, only because, so let's say I have h of x, a whole other function, three, negative 3x three plus 4. Um, and you can also replace or be asked, let's just say, to replace x with an expression. So now this is not simply a number, this is an expression. So I'm still replacing x with something, but it's not simply a number, it's a little bit more difficult. The idea is still the same. Everything is going to stay the same. So I still have negative 3 times whatever x is, put parentheses in place of x, plus 4. And in these parentheses, I'm going to put what's here, 2a plus 1. And then I simplify. So I'm evaluating the function at a, an expression instead of at a number. And you could be asked to do that as well. Order of operations, negative 3 times 2a is negative 6a. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 4. Negative 6a. These can combine, they're like terms. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 
So the um, function h evaluated at the expression 2a plus 1 is equal to negative 6a plus 1. I would say to go over this video as many times as you need to kind of recap what the heck a function is. First of all, how do you determine you have a function? And then when you do have a function, evaluating functions at particular numbers, particular inputs. Good luck.